Returning ADAS systems to working order after a crash is critical today. Michael Giarizzo is here today to let us know exactly the steps his shops take as far as scanning and recalibration from when the vehicle first comes in to just before the keys are handed back to the customer. So do you have a qualified, dedicated tech to do all the scanning and recalibration or are there a couple guys or do you do, you do it in-house, do you sub it out? Yeah, so most of it is done in-house, depending on, on the vehicle, because we are dealer-affiliated. And there's dedicated people at each location that are trained to use that equipment. And they're part of that pre-repair plan routine, which is very regimented, because there's a number of things that have to happen. And that package, that pre-repair plan package, has to be complete in order for us to take the next step. What about the test drive, if a test drive is required? We've been telling our readers that it's no longer just a drive around the block, right? It's more complicated than that. How do you handle that if that's required? Yeah, so again, dedicated people are doing the test drive. We are experimenting or beta testing a product that's out there that with, uh, with some success and uh, with great documentation. But it's no longer just that ride up and down the street where you need to get the vehicle up to temperature, you need to get a certain number of miles on it and get it up to speed. And so it is a, another opportunity to set standards and standard work around that. So Michael, for these processes, are you charging for it? Are you getting any pushback on that? Well, you know, that, that's a tough question to answer because there's always pushback in certain areas. But when we write a repair plan, we're gonna document really every step, every task, every procedure that has to be performed on that vehicle uh, now through that repair plan. That repair plan that is, then is gonna get interpreted into a set of work instructions. Um, Based on all of those things being necessary, which we should have vetted that out by then, those set of work instructions become non-negotiable. It doesn't mean the price isn't negotiable. So the first thing that we want to do is establish that all of the work instructions that we have put on that repair plan are necessary and that we get an agreement with the insurer around that. And then we'll discuss price. Now, there are certain insurers where that's not necessarily the way they like to do things. So it becomes mo more of a cumbersome process. But when you think about that, that's really the way we should go about it. You know, one, is it necessary? Is it included? And, uh, and really go through each line item in that repair plan with that pretense. And then once, once we uh, come to an agreement that these are all necessary and non-included items, or included, uh, if they're included, there's no uh, charge for them, then we can de then determine if there's preferred pricing or special pricing for whatever the situation might be. Mm -hmm. Are you educating customers on this process? For example, if the vehicle repair might take a little longer because of all these new processes you have to do, are you educating the customer on the technology in their vehicle as part of the process? Yeah, we are, I and mean, we're taking to the, the customer through the steps that we're going to perform on the vehicle and why, and we're explaining to them, which they know uh, in a lot of cases, that the vehicle is a complex set of systems. Uh, it's amazing, right? It's a driving set of computers uh, today, and it's not simply replacing a fender, uh, painting it, and putting it back together. It's a number of steps that have to go through to, to ensure that that vehicle is going to perform the way it did before the accident. Michael, does your team do a pre and post repair scan on every vehicle and why? Uh, we do. First of all, we want to know the starting point. We want to know if there's any error, co error codes that are there as a result of the accident or maybe pre-existing codes. Um, and obviously at the end, we want to do a, a scan as well to make sure that all of those systems are functioning uh, properly. And so we do it as a, as a set of routine steps on every single vehicle. You do get pushback from in some insurers. Some insurers just simply refuse to compensate you for that, but it doesn't stop us from really that routine or those set of standards on every vehicle. Do you have a special area of your shop where you do the recalibrations? I understand there has to be a controlled environment and whatnot, and how did you establish that? You know, some of our recalibrations are actually done at our dealer partners. Some are done on site. When, uh, when we're doing them on site, that's a dedicated uh, area. But you know, because all of our locations are dealer-based, we do have that advantage as well to utilize the dealer for some of those services. So if you do sublet some recalibrations, how do you get the car to the, to the dealer? Yeah, so that's a great question. It's really going to depend on what has to be performed and where the dealer is. Uh, fortunately, in, in uh, the case of most of our stores, the dealer's simply a quarter mile or maybe even uh, 
you know, a lesser distance uh, down the road. And so if it's just a simple recalibration, that type of thing, we may drive the vehicle. We're going to use reason, reasonable judgment. If there's any distance to it, or if it's any type of complexity, the vehicle is going on a flatbed. Yeah. There's two reasons. Number one, you don't want to drive a vehicle that has a system, systems that are not functioning properly. The other thing is when that vehicle is going to sublet, you know, for that, it's a finished vehicle. So now you're susceptible to rock chips, mm -hmm. stone chips on a windshield, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a number of reasons for it. You know, in these cases, we're, we're trying to use reasonable judgment. And so another hot topic for us right now is measurement. You know, when do you measure the vehicle? And for us, you know, we've a adopted a practice of measuring everything. And it's kind of like, you know, you go into the doctor and you, you hurt your arm or you fell on your arm. You know, what's the first thing they're going to do? There's an x-ray. Right? And so they want to uh, get a foundation, figure out what they're dealing with. We want to do the same thing. Number one, you know, the structures on these vehicles are very soft. They're made to absorb that impact. So even just a few millimeters of movement create a problem or create even just a fit problem. But also we want to identify, is there any pre-existing conditions on the vehicle? So we're going to measure any time we are taking a part off the vehicle, we're going to measure it. Well, thank you, Michael, for educating us on your scanning and recalibration process. Like DCR systems, you too should have a process for how the scanning and recalibration of ADAS systems happen at your shop. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching.